Hi, this is Danielle and Jonathan Kepperling with uh, Kepperling Preservation Services uh, with our virtual um, preservation coffee break. And I have a friend who is laughing at me because she's like, you really get coffee for your coffee breaks? I'm like, yes, if we didn't, we'd be posers. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, I'm glad. Oh, hi, Barbara. Thanks for joining us. Um, the... Uh, Sorry, I have to unmute you. I Jonathan showed me that last week. <laughs> That's Hello. okay. Um, so we're uh, today. I was going to talk about porches and and different different aspects of porches and how porch styles have changed, uh, at least in in our area throughout the colonial and Victorian times. But did you have a specific question that you want that you want to get answered right now, or do you want us to go into porches? Well, no, I was uh, just curious if there was information about porches relative to the period of structures or houses. Yeah, there is. So, and, so uh, in, in, I'm in Lewis, Delaware, okay. and it's a, um, it, we have a, a lot of different periods of houses, yeah. but they tend to be more um, prior to the Victorian period or Victorian period yeah. or a little after that. And it's, um, it was another, they, they tend to be, um, uh, there's some large homes, but for the most part, they're middle-sized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, um, and, and that's kind of where I was going to start uh, with, with, the, with my porch talk. So in the, in the um, colonial house, typically you walked right from the inside, or right from the outside to the inside. Maybe there was a small small step up or a small porch um think of like the porches you see in Williamsburg that have like the the seats on either side but mm -hmm. it's just it's just a it's just a step up and into the house mm -hmm. um it wasn't until probably the mm -hmm. mid 1800s uh that houses started being built with a setback to to make room for that porch um and we've kind of gone full circle in, in modern construction then where now we're living our lives out of the back of the house. But there was a period where, you know, mid, mid 1800s to, uh, yeah, am I saying that? Yeah, I'm saying it right. Sorry, I was, I was making sure I wasn't saying centuries, mid 1800s to the mid 1900s, where, where we were living our, our, having our social times on the front porch. Um, so the the houses were starting in the mid 1800s they were starting to get built with a setback and then as the victorian um era began it became bigger so it was either the entire front of the house or even like a wrap around right. um mm -hmm. and those elements were easier to create because of the mass production not mass production as we think of but that you could go to a catalog and order this many spindles this many of this and have it delivered and then somebody a craftsman on site could 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 Absolutely. assemble it yeah um, we actually we actually have um a lot of sears not a whole lot but we right. have a significant amount of sears structures yes yeah which and those, are, which those are really cute too that's like the 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 modular home of today <laughs> Yes, yes, but you, it, assembly was required. Maybe the maybe IKEA is a better a better analogy than than modular. <laughs> right. True. True. Yeah. Because you had to put it together. Yeah. So, but that I mean that's that's kind of the evolution of the porch. Um, the the um you but definitely the elements and how the porch's construction can tell you what period the house was, and that's why it's a really important feature of the house because it does tell you it date it, it it's one of the pieces that can help you date the house okay. so you know you have the victorians that were much more fancy the balusters were fancy the handrails were chunkier they had you know many cornices or you know in the on the internal gutter system gingerbread yeah the gingerbread -y kind right. of stuff that everybody associates with victorian mm -hmm. and then even as you get into like the arts and crafts and more of like the early early 20th century you get the um they become more simple like yeah. everything's more just um square posts um you still have a handle but it's not as chunky it's not as elaborate mm -hmm. um the post even the even the big columns are, are more square with less less decoration um and they they have a lot of the same pieces but maybe less less of them it, it yeah. they're not necessarily less or anything it's, it's pretty much the same pieces it's just not as decorative. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you know, it's like you can go to a box store nowadays 
and by balustrade you can you know but right going to most likely just get square stock pieces yeah. mm. unless you want fancier then mm -hmm. you might have to go special places for that stuff mm -hmm. and so that's what i mean by it's just more simpler yeah, it, yeah mm -hmm. it's more simple one nice one good thing about porches as long as as long as they're in good condition is that they do protect the majority of the porch elements are protected mm -hmm. from the weather so that does mean that you don't now you're you're in a unique situation being at the ocean because that yeah. makes it harder on on the building just in general yeah it does and it's um and this is a little off subject but it's the reason that there's been so much pressure to use um uh, the synthetic you know, yeah. other synthetic materials um, but what's interesting is when I go online at different times to have looked up other communities and, and their regulations or guidelines, um, the last time I looked up Cape May, which is across the Delaware right. Bay from, from us, is that they, they, hold, they hold strong to all natural materials. That's, that, that's, that's good to know. I can see, I can see a, a a use for some of those synthetic materials especially if it's up high and it's been a problem but if you're if you're either maintaining what's originally there or you're replacing with good quality wood not not pine not cedar even um but you know something that will that will stand you know withstand the the mm. the elements and you're using stainless steel fasteners because that's a huge issue when you have the the salt air because uh, the stainless steel fasteners, if you don't use stainless steel, they're going to rust and, um, and fast. And fast. Uh, we've seen it. We were on, we were at a property that just had brackish water. Is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, they, they were like in inland a little bit, but the, the stream behind them was, was brackish. And was it five years that the nail, the nails on the roof started to give way? So we, we had, we, we didn't do the roof, but then we, they called us to figure out what was going on. The, the fasteners were letting loose. So we went up, well, I didn't go up. I say we collectively yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, went and, and refastened it then with stainless steel. Okay. That's, that's like my, my, and, and they use it in, for boats. So, I mean, it makes sense, you know, the Marine Is this, is this true um, of, uh, for cedar siding? For siding uh, material, any yeah, siding? I would. I well, siding uh, cedar is you can get high quality cedar. Um, we typically get it out of Canada, and they're pulling it out of the bogs, like they're pulling first growth trees still out of the bogs. And these trees are so round that on its side was like twice the size of like a six foot man. Yeah, they're huge. Uh, the the cedar that we're getting now is um, second growth, and it's just it's just not as durable as it once was. Um, so for, for the, for the value, for the, for the price and for what you're going to get out of it is well, if it's going to get painted, I would say, you know, use, uh, um, use, well, you can't get it commercially. See, that's, that's the other thing. So if you're just getting commercial siding, it might be worth it. And then use a high quality paint, maybe with like a preservative. I don't, I don't, I, I would have to think about it and like, look at the situation, but that's my first, my, my gut in. You mean yeah, because yeah, you're gonna pay more to have it milled. Because they're yeah. they're, they're putting up, they're able to make some of the cheaper material more longevity, mm -hmm. but you're also drenching it in chemicals. Right. And yeah. so you're giving and take there. Yeah. When you know you you like I can go and buy like a a decent mahogany or sapelia, mm -hmm. and that has no more chemicals than its natural composition. And as long as I do things like back prime it and, you know, seal it, make sure everything's it painted, it, you know, and that's what a lot of painters nowadays don't do is even back prime. And by sealing it in behind things that you don't see. And sealing the cut. Yep. That you're creating it to be sealed in itself. So water and stuff that can't penetrate as easy. Okay. I, I, are you talking when you're talking about cedar siding? Are you talking about like a like a clapboard, or are you talking like um, like shakes, like for on a roof? No, talking about siding. You know. Yeah, but are, is it like the shake siding, or is it like the the the, long, the, 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 the long long boards? It's long. the long boards. 
if if you're doing long boards, because I was thinking it would be really expensive to to recreate shakes that way. If you're doing long boards, I think I would compare the cost between um, what's commercially available out of a cedar and and um, and what would what it would take to make um, like it out of mahogany or sepalia. I I would compare the cost. I think it would be comparable. Mm -hmm. Could be, especially if you figure in how long does the cedar last now? Right. Yeah, if not. It's not, it's not nearly as long. Yeah. So if you're thinking, you, you know, then you're going to have to pay somebody to come out, take it off two times, yeah. put it back on two times yeah. to get the same amount of, say, like a mahogany. You know, you got to think of it that way, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, you wanted to talk about porches. So I'll be, I'll... I am happy to answer whatever questions you have. <laughs> Am I only the the only one on this? Right now, yes, yeah. So we have people pop on and off, so okay. we have, yeah, yeah. Okay. We listen later, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, then, if um, uh, well, I was, uh, I guess I just need to do some get, getting back to the porches. I guess I just need to do some look up some research. I'm trying to figure out a way to. Um, you made a, a a clear statement, which I figure is. Uh, I should have thought about is that the style of the porch will also be indicative of the period of the house. Yes, mm -hmm. yes yeah. And, and there are um, actually, I had them out earlier. Let me just grab my, my, my I'm over at my bookshelf. <laughs> it looks, like, it looks just like mine. I don't. Yeah. You can't really there's see There's two mine, um, like different style like books characters. that I that I reference pretty often. Um, oh, this one called? is American. American houses, and the other one is the Abrams Guide to American House Styles. Uh, you can see all my sticky notes sticking out of it. Okay. Um, but that they have, they're really clear with like. Um, I was looking at the early Georgian period today, and they actually tell you like even. I don't know if you can see that. I can, I can. That's wonderful. But it tells you like even like what the features are, where what their what their entryways look like. And there, I mean, there there are some variations, you know, for for region, but it gives you a good idea of at least what what was generally done. Okay. Um, can, you, can you hold those up again? I can write oh, down sure. the so it's American, it's American houses. All right. And that's by and Gerald Foster. Yeah, uh, Gerald. Gerald Foster. And yeah, yes. The okay. other one is Abrams Guide to American House Styles. American House Styles. Okay. The Abrams Guide is more exteriors. Um, the the American houses is it uh, does deal more with like floor plans and things like that but it's a good they they both kind of do an overview of the of the american styles and yeah. that's not some <laughs> i'm looking primarily for the exterior yeah uh, yeah we have um, a I would... preservation commission i can just google those and uh... yeah you can you can and i'm sure they're both easily available you know, on Amazon or, or any, any book right. where you'd want to, want to get it from. Um, and I'm just thinking what else I have that, um, I don't know if this one, I think this one just does doors. I think they, they, yeah, this, I may, I may well, I'm, I'm going to reach over and grab a book. I may have, oh, no, that's fine. It's like yeah. a little bit of doorway entry. Yeah, this is like this that. is the uh, this is the one that I have. Can you see it? Yes, it. I think that's the same as. Oh, maybe it's not the Abrams. No, it's not the Abrams. Oh, okay. It? Yeah. I guess it's. Does it, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't have that one. I'll have to add it to my yeah, list. <laughs> I, this, this one has a lot. Has a um. Has a lot of houses that are not really. Uh, applicable to the city of Lewis. There's, yeah, there, I have several, how, several books that are like, um, that I picked up um, at a traditional building conference that are more domestic architecture because there's a, you know, there's not a lot of, um, there, there hasn't been a lot of study of just houses that everyday people live in. So right. I, I do have um, another book I have, I have uh, this one. 
think these two are just focused on houses also, but they're more like academic kind of uh, the everyday architecture of the mid Atlantic and then the architecture of democracy. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I think for for what you're for what you're doing, I think actually these are more not that they're not good, but they're more um, theory. And like that, you know, like talking about, and, and I think for you just being able to go in and look and say, this is, this is what would be typical for this style of how the first two would be more. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing that we're always challenged with is when uh, applicants uh, for the Preservation Review Commission come in with uh, new materials. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the substitute materials. And um, and we, um, the, um, the Hardy board or the mm -hmm. cement board, um, that's become something that's used on a regular basis. Yeah. Now, do you, um, do you discuss with them, and I guess if the homeowner's not doing it themselves, they might not care, but there are um, um, OSHA concerns with cutting that, and there's new silica regulations. Okay, yeah, because I, I Googled it and I saw yeah. that. And then there was another board, and I forget now the name of it. Is it the Boral or something yes. like that? Yes. We haven't used that. I've seen it spec'd on one project that we looked at last year. We've never used that. Yeah, and that too has a similar problem. It? Cause it's, because it's made out of cement. <laughs> and, um, and I think it had, uh, well, um, one of, the, one of them, um, one of the commissioners actually is a architect and he's done a lot of renovation work properties his own properties and he found that it wasn't it wasn't good if the boards went down too close to the soil because they i guess absorb moisture or something oh yeah of course it's concrete yeah <laughs> yeah and um and then the other board um i think there was the the second board you mentioned i think there was a, a brittle a brittle aspect to it i can believe that yeah there was a little more waste involved um, especially if so, it's splitty because it wouldn't cut the same yeah even if you could machine it it wouldn't cut the same yeah. so um you know the uh um the cement board or or, or mm -hmm. the hardy board uh that's been been used quite a bit around mm -hmm. lewis um, but we have, we were able to get the ordinance changed and require on the houses that are classified as contributing structures mm -hmm. because of their age. Right. Um, they, we are require, and, and because um, the, uh, the historic district, a lot of the historic district, the houses are very close together on the side and some of them are close to the road and side right. like that. A little bit, and and so because they're close to the side, so the what the um, we were trying to get on the um, contributing structures requirement that the face of the structure is all natural wood material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so we did we we tried to get the whole house, but of course, right, right, the, but they were working. It has to go before Mayor. <laughs> Kent, but the compromise was we got the face of the house. Right. Well, some of the good designers say, well, I have to do the whole face. I'm not changing materials. I'm going to do wood the whole Right. Thing. But, yeah. But th those are few and far between, unfortunately. Um, but then we, we get the, um, the contractors, uh, a lot of the contractors, well, they complain that they, uh, they can't get the same quality wood. And, you know, I, I'm not going to debate that with them. I'm right. Sure it's absolutely well, and it, I mean, out of a out of a typical lumber yard, it is hard. I mean, if you if your only option is to go to a lumber yard and buy what they have on the shelf, you can't. I mean, I agree with them, but yeah. but there are other options. Um, and Maybe and I sourcing guess, outside of our our town. Well, no, just in general, like you could. Um, you you could you can i mean the, the the wood that is is the options that are at the hardware store are not at any any new hardware store um except if, except if it's a specialty like there's a couple special ones i can but think what of. did you buy at a yeah. hardware store yeah. well this like, is this is like big a box office is all pine and it's designed so that once you use it you're stuck reusing it it's right. it's just a it's planned it's, obsolescence yeah, so it's that second growth that yeah. you know in five years or so you got to come back just to reuse it yeah. but you can also get a lot of the plate like 
the smaller lumber yard right who they some of them got their own milling machine and they have their own mill shops yeah and mill shops so they can actually get the mahogany in and make it out of mahogany or white oak there's or a white lot oak, there's, a or lot there's of so options. many options yeah. that you can use cypress would yep. be another option i would use outside um, um some of the more like teak or something like that you can't paint so i wouldn't recommend that uh epi epi is another yeah, one and yeah. that's way too hard and most yeah, people want to yeah. want to deal with that but so. uh but there are options but yeah if if you're if you're just looking at what you can go in and buy at a at just off the shelf from a lumber yard i agree that that it is inferior to to the substitute materials but i think that yeah i, I think are, that's yeah. that's what they're generally looking for because yeah. the lowe's home depot and some of the other you know available and, and, and it, that is true and it's typically finger joint it so it's little tiny pieces of wood that they're holding together like this <laughs> that's what that's what the that's what the finger joining is and if you look close they're enough about six yeah. inches long and they basically take one board and run like a router with a bunch of teeth on it and another, and another one and they glue it together problem is once it gets wet the water the glue starts to delaminate and fall apart so this is for siding, exterior mold. siding. I'm oh, sorry. This is exterior siding. There's oh, th any any molding that you would buy at the at at a at a like off the shelf at the lumber yard, it's really hard to buy solid wood. So if mm. it doesn't say solid wood, it's probably finger jointed. Mm. They do it with porch flooring, siding, yeah. trims, pretty moldings, anything you could think of. The, they yeah. they can make it with it. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I haven't seen that because now some of them are. I, I mean, it's usually marked F, FG. Finger joint. Yeah, FJ. FJ. And that just stands for finger jointed. If you look at a modern house, this is where I see it a lot in modern houses. If you look at a modern house at the casing, the door casing, typically oh. when it starts to, the when the casing starting to rot, You'll start to see the finger joint there coming up from the from the bottom of the because the the pine has been absorbing the water. Um, but if it's not painted, you can see. If it's painted, you you really can't tell until it starts to until fail. it starts to fail. But it's just it's another spot where the water can get into into the into the um, mm -hmm. into the wood and into the house. <laughs> Have you seen um, any other? Um, uh, you know, man-made materials for siding or trim that you think um, turned out to be pretty good or? We don't use a lot of them. So I, I my, my knowledge of them is limited. Mm -hmm. um, I did go to a drug lunch at a, at a uh, I called it a drug lunch because they bought us lunch to talk to us about, <laughs> about their materials. <laughs> but um, uh, about AZAC, which is a poly. Yeah. yeah. Um, plastic it's plastic. Or... It's 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 vinyl. Um, or, or yes. vinyl. Well, they they use that here for a lot of trim. Yeah, and it's, like yeah, the ceilings, the porch. I think that uh, you know the artificial uh, beadboard. I think is yeah. that material. And, and it does. Yeah, it, it they can so machine the, it. The window trim, mm -hmm. window trim, and uh, fascia boards, mm -hmm. and I think. Yeah, and uh, th there's been a lot of um, conversation, you know, heated mm -hmm. conversation about th that being permissible. Right. And, well, yeah, yeah, I struggle with it a little bit. I think that if it's a hard to reach area and nobody's going to touch it, kind of touch level kind of thing, I I'm, I get less passionate about it. Right. But um, it's plastic. And... Okay. If it gets too hot, it's going to melt. It's going to warp. Um, you need to double up the uh, nail. The fat, yeah, the fastening is different than if you were fastening wood. So you have to have an installer that, that's that's knowledgeable of that. Okay. Um, the other, the other drop, like it, we're just talking exterior, but interior. Mm -hmm. The building code only allows it to be in twenty five percent of the first floor because if there's a fire, once that plastic starts to melt, it's going to kill everybody. Really? Yeah. Because it's plastic. So twenty five percent. This is just on the first floor. Is this? This I mean, is just exterior. Exterior. exterior? Yeah. Uh, interior. Inside. Interior. 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 Oh, yeah. interior. Yeah, but well, it's still it's plastic. plastic. Yeah. Yeah. So this we're, we're just doing in exterior. Yeah. Exteriors. Yeah, but that's that's the other thing I know about it. The um the 
one of the bonuses to that material as opposed to maybe the the cement boards and some of those is that it is machinable so you know it comes in in dimensional lumber sizes so you could run it through the same woodworking machines and get the same profile so from a from a purely aesthetic preservation standpoint it's probably that's that that's probably like one that is that's that's it that's what it has going forward in my book yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's interesting. but but yeah. ideally um you I, also need special paint yeah oh yeah you can't and you at least you used to not be able to do darker colors because the uv so there there were there was a range of colors that you could use um it seems, it seems I, very susceptible to mildew you know oh, if it's yeah. the north side or if it's like the porch ceiling and things like that it's uh looks pretty bad <laughs> i i can i can believe that yeah i can i can i can believe that the um the other thing that i mean ideally it would be it would be great if you know the there wasn't a it wasn't necessary for a total replacement and I don't know, is that what, it, like when people are coming to you at the board, is it because the building is in such bad shape that they need to replace the totality or could there be repairs made? Um, usually it's because they are doing modifications to the building. And um, in some cases they're doing, you know, really positive stuff. Like they're right. taking a, um, a partially enclosed porch or um, porch that's been modified the front porch back to what it was originally and they right. have pictures of the original porch and but uh, the materials um are not uh, the existing materials i guess right. are not really good um and then some of it is uh, we we also review all new construction on empty lots mm -hmm. um yeah. in the historic district and do you do you put restrictions on materials and for for the for the infill yes okay Okay. But we do, but not not at the same level as right. the uh, you know contributing structures. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah. don't make them do wood material on the front face of the house. Right. And um, and you know we don't. Of course, we look at um, we we judge them on the streetscape, the compatibility mm -hmm. with the streetscape, right? You know, scale and mass and things like that yeah and that the style is um it doesn't have to be a replica house but that the style is compatible right because you, know, you want to be able to show that it's a different time period yeah. right and yeah. and but that it needs to fit in with scale and proportions yeah. and yeah. design and things like it, it that. can't be a, it can't be a mini skyscraper <laughs> no, 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 no. It can't be it can't be a con you know, concrete block structure it can't you know the materials everything has to be consistent you yeah. know so yeah. it sort of it doesn't uh, stand out in a negative way yeah but um anyway how long do you do these things for oh like, until hour? we're done <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're easy. <laughs> this is the last thing on my list that I'm going to get done today. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I met you a couple times when there used to be those shows in yes, in Valley Forge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And we chatted, and we, you know, we chatted about preservation uh, commissions and regulations and all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, and so they're not doing that show or another. No. Kind of they haven't, it's been a couple of years that they haven't oh, I think done it. It's been like close to five, I think. Yeah, I, I was thinking it's three or four, but yeah, it might be, it might be close to five. Yeah. So yeah. Um, any other shows in this general area that you're participating in or? No, 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 we're, we're not. Um, I'm, I'm going to start doing kind of my own outreach to different organizations and things like that to kind of let them know that we were available for presentations and things like that but um there's not any big shows and the 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 attendance was really going down and i don't know if some of that like i i think there were n a number of factors mm -hmm. but i don't know if some of that's the easy um easy the accessibility of of information oh, yeah. on the internet oh yeah it could be. um i don't know i yeah i i don't know i know that they they struggled and kind of kept it going because they had i mean it, when when they bought it from um the goodriches and when old house journal or active media oh, whatever they're okay. when they bought it from the goodriches 
they really were trying to keep it going and they they i'm sure they were losing money because it was expensive to put on and, um, and a lot yeah, of work and, yeah and a lot of work and the and the tennis just kept falling off mm -hmm. um and i don't know why that is because i know we've tried to do i the the shows that i've seen that are fairly successful or like one day and you just kind of get a table and you come and talk you know, people come and talk to you and and look like a local organization puts it on like i know our um the lancaster city historic commission did one to kind of just let the people in the historic district know you know okay. there are people that can help you and they had they brought in a lighting person they brought in contractors you know and they just kind of everybody got a table and you just talk to people it wasn't as big of a production okay um, and they didn't they didn't have scheduled talks like no they didn't have scheduled talks it was just you know come 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 ask your questions come talk to people okay yeah, yeah. the our other big challenge is we have not been able to get people to embrace keeping old windows and repairing and refurbishing yeah. them um, they just I, um that you know that the, to pace to have some but it it works best if you're passionate about it and you do it right. yourself yeah. or you do at least some of it yourself Yes. We have one house that um, they had the means and the passion, but they paid to have the, how the all the windows removed mm -hmm. and the glazing, all of which was old glazing, right. um, single glazing, and that removed and, those, and the frames refurbished and the glazing put back in. Yeah. And I mean, it looked, it, it no longer really looked old, except the glass, because the glass was still... Right. <laughs> The they, they the look glass, brand new. Yeah, the only glass, the glazing that they replaced was anything that was damaged, and right. then they found old glazing to do it. I mean, they were just, they're just like poster children <laughs> and everything they yeah. did. And they did um, th just for um, uh, th the fact that the spaces didn't, they had to do some major repairs on previous bad, cheap additions. On right. the back end, back side, um, and so in modifying it and trying to make an open floor plan more user friendly for today's mm -hmm. lifestyles, yeah. you know, we allowed them to alter. Um, I think two windows that were now going to be at the counter height for. Oh yeah. You know for that, but they um, it was interesting. the The house had a two sided porch but the house looked like it wanted that porch to wrap around oh yeah it just it, it looked like what they do they change their mind <laughs> run out of money with it so we let them do that you know yeah. it's not um, sometimes yeah sometimes there's there's give and take there <laughs> yes well that's kind of our our directive is that to accommodate the change in lifestyles and at the same time you know protect it we call it rehabilitation not hard fast preservation right. yeah yeah the um the windows are, are a hard sell um typically you know people want to do it because there's i mean you get bombarded with um propaganda with, <laughs> yeah with the propaganda with the with the marketing from the replacement window companies that are just telling you you need to take out your windows and and get rid of them um they they are i mean from a product standpoint they are inferior and they're going to fail uh and they're not repairable you're going to have to re repair them and you're never going to get your energy efficiency out of them um and there's there's engineering studies to prove that no um, which they're never going to get the energy out of which efficiency so they're th like what you pay into the window you're never going to to replace them you're never going to get that energy efficiency back you're okay. much better to uh, you're much better to um, fix some old ones. To yeah, to well, I was gonna. Well, say, you're much better to insulate at the uh, at the ground level, at the and basement the level, and then at the roof because the walls are a negative plane. So you only lose yeah. about ten percent of your energy through the wall. So if you and that includes your windows and your doors. So if you um, <clears throat> hold on, we had somebody else join. I was gonna unmute. Yes, um, If we um uh if if you so your walls are negative plane so if you um if you replace your windows and it's only 10 percent, they're saying they're going to save you five percent you're only going to save five percent of your heating and cooling costs for replacing your windows well your windows are going to fail before you get that money back and there's and and there's the science backs that understanding building science backs that hmm. um 
but and and if a windows have, have been there for 100 200 years they're mm -hmm. you know the materials are going to last they're repairable mm -hmm. um I think that in this, uh, you know, we, we don't get a real severe winter, at least right. in the last few years, um, but we do get some wind. And so then the this one house, they haven't decided what they're going to do. I sent them a bunch of material um, or sites that they could look up storm windows that are designed for historic mm -hmm. structures yes. that will, you know, match the height of the, mm -hmm. of the. Oh, across, yeah. So that um, the common rails line up. Yeah. Right, um, and things like that. And I think they went out and bought some heavy drapes for the interiors. <laughs> uh, that, that's um, another option. <laughs> yes, and uh, um, I think, and they don't live there full time. So, you know, maybe it just yeah. hasn't been an issue and yeah. they just decided to let it go. I'm not sure. Hello. So our, um, I, I know that for, for what, went, and, and, and full window restoration though is expensive because it's labor intensive. It's all labor. Um, just yeah. That. So yeah. if if um if if a homeowner you're you're correct if a homeowner is willing to strip the paint and then bring somebody in just to do the repairs, mm -hmm. or do the work themselves, start in the back. That's what I tell people. Start in the back of the house. By the time you get to the front, you'll be in good shape. Stripping <laughs> <laughs> the paint on on a on a window opening is probably about eighty percent of the job. Yeah. It's it's just a lot of labor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. So you actually do a, a building science, um, uh, presentation or something. I, well, I talk about it when I talk about energy efficiency and how efficiency. old windows are, are, um, old windows are, uh, or not old windows, old buildings in general are, were built to be energy efficiency because energy yeah. wasn't, wasn't cheap or easy yeah. to get when they built the building. Well, I mean, that's the whole idea of the double hung is, you know, you, right. uh, you lower the top and raise the bottom and yeah. you've got this great yeah, air circulation. Yeah. 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 So, um, anyway, well, this has been uh, very informative. I enjoyed it very much. Oh, thank you. Chat. Thank you for coming on with us. Yeah. And so how often do you do these now? Uh, once a week on Wednesdays. Once a week on Wednesdays. Yes. Okay. Always at 4.30. 4.30. Okay, well, I'll keep an eye out for your um, your next announcement. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you okay, for doing this. I'm going to sign off now. Okay, see you All later. Right. Thank you both. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, Herb. How are you? Oops, I can't hear you. Uh, hold on. Uh, maybe I muted you. Hold on, let me... Uh, no. Uh, no, unmuted. you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. I think you, you might have maybe if you go to the bottom corner, can you see if you have a mute button, a, a microphone in the corner? Uh, yeah, he's he muted himself. Unmute there. Yeah, but it... oh, okay. Is that better? Oh, oh no, we're struggling. Uh, let me. Is it on his end? Yeah, it is. He might have to just unmute on his end. I think that there's a mute button in the corner, in the right-hand corner, but right above where you would turn the computer on and off. If you could, if you click that, it should unmute you. Oops, now I'm now I'm trying to unmute you. Oh no. Oh, hold on. Okay, if this isn't working, if you can't get it to work, I will I will I will hold on. I unplugged it. Can you plug it in? I think I unplugged it for my podcast and I didn't plug it in. No, the just the just the so the plug.
Yeah, if you, I did, um, I sent you a message that if you wanna call the office, we can call the office and we can answer whatever questions you have. Okay. <laughs> So. 